Hey guys, it's Adam Jorgensen from Pragmatic Works. Welcome back to our Azure Everyday series. And I'm super excited today to bring you some uh, in-person live interaction uh, with James Roland Jones, who is a principal program manager on the Azure SQL Data Warehouse team. I've been out here this week, uh, spending some time with them, understanding what new things are coming. And so dropping today, April 30th, is the new Gen 2 for yep. SQL Data Warehouse. So That's welcome, right. James, and we're excited to talk about that. Thanks very much, Adam. So, so Gen 2 is all about a lot more value for the customer, lots of features, performance, concurrency. Talk to me about, you know, I'm, I'm a customer who's thinking about moving my data warehouse to the cloud. Why would I want to jump now because there's Gen 2? Oh, so Gen 2 is a pretty uh, major investment for us. Um, it uh, really builds on our separation of compute and storage story that we have for cloud data warehousing, which offers great value for customers. I mean, it's a great low entry start point for customers that are looking to build in this space, very broadly deployed, 20 regions in the world, largest uh, cloud-based deployment of any cloud data warehouse. But I mean, when we really get into it, when we get to the nuts and bolts, what this, uh, this new generation offers is gonna give you five times the compute capacity of any Ooh. anything that we have today so that's pretty sweet so wow um you can you can deploy up to four thousand virtual cores in like five minutes or less so um, wow and then that's, we're gonna do that later challenge yeah. accepted i kind of yeah. want to see that happen. absolutely yes. right and then and then we're going to take that and then we're going to add to that um so one of the things that we've heard a lot of uh, feedback about from customers is they really want to be able to use all of that compute power and actually use that in lots of different ways and increase the amount of concurrent workloads that they have on the system. So as you scale now, you can actually increase the concurrent uh, query capacity up to 128 concurrent queries, which actually nice. is a very significant uplift over what we have today. It's a kind of a four times uplift in, in, in that. And that's, a, that's great for customers that have a more of a mixed workload, a more uh, a mixed workload across everything. So that's great. Um, and then on top of all of that, the actual, it, under the hood, what we've been able to do is uh, increase the actual kind of aggregate workload through some of the intelligent smarts we've added so that actually we're seeing customers able to get like a five times increase in their kind of aggregate workload when using this new technology. So it's pretty, pretty cool. So not only is it much faster, yep. but you have a lot more flexibility on the kinds of workloads we can run on there because yep. we can get higher concurrency workloads or just you know raw throughput. Um, and you've got great starting points for customers to get in and get access to it. Yeah, right? absolutely. So you mentioned this thing before that I think not enough people understand, but we know how important it is is that separation of compute and storage, which yeah. I know is kind of unique, right, to, yeah. to SQL Data Warehouse. So talk just for a second about kind of what, what is that, right? Why does that matter in data warehousing? I think a lot of people don't know that, but when you explain it, I think they're gonna go, oh, that's super important. Yeah, so the, the basic model that we think about with SQL Data Warehouse is this notion that you can actually separate the compute and uh, what you're paying for in the compute from the storage layer. So if you think about it in your bill, you actually have two separate line items right, on the bill. Right. Um, and so then as a mindset, what we say is, is basically you store the data that you have and now you're just paying for performance. Oh, and so okay. you just scale that up as, as, as to the performance that you need in a just-in-time pattern, right? Okay. So rather than thinking about like a, a capacity-based kind of preemptive sizing where you think about something maybe on an, in an on-premise world, where you have to do this kind of coming back some time and then thinking about what, you, what you're gonna need for three years into the future, you don't need any of that. You just size it to the workload that you're doing. So if it's month end reporting and you want more compute power, away you go. Right. If you're just like at the weekend, nobody's using it, you can even completely turn the compute off and you're, and you're basically um, saving significant money. But you didn't have to pre-buy one no. or the other. So I mean, that's one of our biggest complaints from uh, I call them companies who are still collecting boxes, right? So the, yep. the appliance world, the Teradatas and the Teasas, et cetera, right? Because they're having to buy millions of dollars in expansion just to get some more cores or some more storage, really. In a lot yep. of cases, it's for storage. So they need you know, another 100 terabytes and they're spending millions of dollars to get basically storage, which should come for cheap, yep. right? And, and comparatively, the cost of that storage in the cloud is, is inexpensive. And so they're able to scale the compute power separately from the storage, which gives them 
you know, flexibility that kind of matches their business. That's that's kind of where you guys are going with that. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 it's a and it's a sig- very very significant and profound impact that you have for for, for a customer that has maybe uh, either a, a high compute but low storage co- requirement or the other way around. And the fact of the matter is, is that when you do need to change, it's uh, like you know. It's a 60 to 90 second uh, operation. Oof. It's not a size of data operation. If you think about like the legacy model, those two paradigms of compute and storage, when they're tied together and tightly bound, what that means is, is that anytime you need to change one of those two dimensions, you actually have to kind of resize, and it's a size of data operation. So right. in data warehouses that we see where they are terabytes in size or you know going up into the kind of petabyte scale, if you have to redo that data volume, that's a significant operation, and it and and it takes takes the business offline effectively from an analytics pay capability right. perspective. That's not what we're about. We're about actually dynamic scaling and dynamic sizing right at the point when you need it, and giving you that compute power and that flexibility. The the five x uh, increase that we've introduced in that compute scale means that you've got headroom for days, right? I mean, well, that's pretty cool. So I mean, I know that you know without mentioning any names, right? We we see some of those challenges in resizing and downtime, even in other cloud data warehouse platforms. And yep. so it's pretty that's pretty cool. So you're talking about a lot of things: concurrency, performance, um, being able to handle that separation of compute and storage. How does that? How do those big new gains kind of work behind the scenes? All right, so behind the scenes, um, one of the things that you do when you separate compute and storage is obviously the, co- the, the memory and the com- CPUs are kind of close together, right. but you have, you're, you're basically making a remote I.O. Okay. And so that, that, that's great in terms of flexibility, but as you scale, as you really want the, the best in class performance, right. you're going to hit a kind of a, a scalability wall at right. some point, right? And, 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 and for our first generation customers, that's... That's something that we have kind of had that conversation with them with, and we've um, planned to make sure that we're we're here ready with Gen 2 for when they need it. And what Gen 2 provides is actually inside those nodes, we're using the latest in Azure hardware, that's an NVMe-backed um, disk-based cache. It's an intelligent cache that automatically is um, tiering the storage and actually um, providing a, a great kind of uh, performance boost because it essentially eliminates the remote I.O. Oh, for those yeah. repetitive queries. And that means that you're getting this great throughput on, a, <clears throat> on the compute. The scan rates are fantastic and the customers are just getting the benefit from that. So yeah, we, we even have customers now in preview. Some customers take that and they want to actually use that and, and get cost savings. And, yeah. and they get that straight off the bat with SQL DW. <laughs> And actually, the customers that are on the Gen 1, they literally, in the portal themselves, can actually just, literally themselves, just um, upgrade to Gen 2 in line. So, so if they're already time. running to yeah. get it, they just go into the portal and say, I'd like the new one, please. Yes. And, and will it will upgrade. It will, it. And it doesn't go down to do that or stay yeah. down. It's it's going to be a pretty quick process it's for a, them. It, it's, a quick, it's, a, it's a quick process. It's something that they need to go and manage. But it's... Um, it's a it's a straightforward process and it is managed for themselves through the portal and that's the main thing is that it's very clear what they need to what what what's going on they they're able to do that nice in a very simple and straightforward way very cool you guys have a lot of smart people working there yeah so it's a very exciting time to be in the space uh, i have to say being in a kind of the analytics space right now is something that we um i see as a as a really uh, a vibrant space after kind of several years of data warehousing being a kind of seen as a, a sort of like a very traditional kind of space. We're seeing customers really wanting to stretch the boundaries, really doing some very exciting stuff um, and really transforming their businesses, modernizing their platforms, coming to, to Azure and, and really thinking about things like, I mean, this is a craziness. They're actually thinking about their on-premise pre- data warehouse, that thing that they once thought about as being the the, right. the 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 kind of the bit which centralized everything for them that's now the silo right right, right. the cloud the cloud is the is the platform the cloud is the bring place where they are driving all of that new data and that's the place they want to be and that's well, very exciting yeah it is super exciting because we're seeing patterns like you know uh, the the SQL data warehouse being you know, that central location as, as sort of the, the hub, if you will, right? And we're seeing Databricks, Cosmos DB, 
other data technologies, whether it's you know other data stores or other sort of scale out analytics processes, et cetera, yep. all work because they're designed to work together. One of the things I tell people about Azure over other cloud platforms is it's one group building things that work together. Yep. And so getting your data into the cloud, into something like a SQL DW sets you up for you know, all the things that you want to do downstream, right? It's going to accelerate all of those things. And I think even in preview, you guys are seeing some pretty interesting patterns, right? Yeah, for sure. And like, for example, I mean, Azure is a platform, the our analytics stack, one of the things to think about with that is like all of those, all of those engines, whether it's uh, Databricks, HDI, et cetera, et cetera, all of us, we're all separating compute and storage, right? That's right fundamental to the kind of the whole platform story that we have. So you can literally store the data that you have and then you're paying for performance and using the engine that you want that best aligns to the persona that is um, actually wanting to interact with that data. So for example, if I'm a, if I'm a data science guy, I wanna use Python, I wanna use R and I wanna use Spark, you know, well there's Azure Databricks as a best right. of breed engine right there for you. Um, if I want to then provide that data over into something like a, for a data analyst to consume, mm -hmm. easy peasy, right? My data frame dot save, my data frame dot load, both of those are literally moving that data transparently through into SQL Data Warehouse. And the, 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 the mindset of the data scientist, they haven't had to come out of their the They don't have to the retool. No, they just continue forward yeah. and Data Warehouse plugs in. And then Data Warehouse plugs in, gives you great interactive query, gives you uh, secured access. We all know how important GDPR is to like yes. everybody. So everybody. We, have, we have all of that built into that platform and we're ready to go. Nice, very cool. So there are still some people on the planet who don't have Azure Data, SQL Data Warehouse yet, Yeah. right? Uh, how do they go find out more? Where, where should we send them? So the best thing, best thing I would say is, is, is like literally go into the portal. You can start up, you can, there are trials. There's lots of places like that for you to go and actually explore the service. Cost of curiosity has never been lower for any type of data warehouse or right. analytics. Um, the docs are a great place to kind of learn and, and, and enhance. And there's also even um, uh, free uh, tutorials and lessons up on, on edX and all the rest of it. There's, uh, there's a ton of great resources out there. Um, and um, and also, I would also make special mention of the Azure blog. We're doing a lot of um, great content um, coming up through the through the blog post, and then literally through our partners. We are um, sessions like this where people are now able to reach back out and get kind of like a, uh, a, a, a a second a second view on everything that we're doing, right? And help them understand how to like navigate and. and chart the best course for them as they go into into this kind of really vibrant world of sql based analytics very very cool so folks if you are ready to go out and get onto it after this video i don't know what it's going to take i mean we got a lot more performance concurrency tons of good things james mentioned docs.microsoft.com there's just a ton of uh even just simple examples and hands-on labs there if you're interested in learning more about how uh, data Warehouse or Data Warehouse Gen 2 can really help drive your business or bring your data and your strategy together. Let us know here at Pragmatic Works and we'll do everything we can to point you in the right direction. Thanks so much, James. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thank you. Thanks for all the help this week and uh, we'll see you guys later. Take care.